Hi, everyone. My name is Tiff, and I'm the Behavior Manager at the Humane Society of Western Montana. I'm also a certified professional dog trainer. Thank you so much for tuning into this live stream. I hope to leave you with many uh, actionable and helpful tips for house training or potty training your puppy today. And as I noted in the comments, these tips will absolutely help with adult dog house training as well. Um, so this live stream is just a little different. I know house training is a huge topic for puppy owners, but we didn't address it until now because it's not the flashiest thing to present on. So as you can see, I'm just sitting comfortably at my desk right now, and there's not very much I can demonstrate with my puppy. And if I did, it would just be like a minute where she pees outside and you can watch her pee outside and we're done. So this is gonna be very conversational instead. And I also understand through doing many behavior helpline calls, which we do for free, by the ways, that house training can be complex in that the individual nuances of what different puppy owners face are dependent on their puppy, their household, and so on and so forth. So as we go through these tips, uh, if you have any specific questions about house training, if you're seeking any clarification, please put your questions in the comments. I will be watching the comments very closely as we go along, and I will address as many questions as possible. If there is a question that I don't address by the end of this, I will leave some contact information at the end so that you can reach me or my other trainers and we can continue helping you with house training your puppy or adult dog. So let's get started. Uh, I have 10 or more tips for you. And if you... Um, are anxious to remember all of this stuff, well, one, you can always revisit this live stream because it will be on our Facebook page and we'll, it will be added to our YouTube channel in the future. But you can also have a little notepad and pen ready so that you can write down these tips. I'm gonna be very clear about what tips I'm going through, number one, number two, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna just write myself a quick note because I actually have a tip number 11. Oh, shoot, I just forgot it actually. It'll come back. Hopefully you took that time to grab a notepad and a pen. I just wrote the word don't. <laughs> don't what? Don't, there's so many don'ts. Okay, but let's start. Tip number one, puppies will have accidents. Even if you're a professional trainer and you have all the right gear set up, so prepare for accidents and get your house ready for accidents. Let me give you a few tips on how you can do this because there is no one right or wrong way and it really depends on your setup and your household. So here is an example from my life. I live in a really small rental with really not great carpets and I there's carpeting everywhere. So what I did, I'm just gonna do this real quick. quick. You can see my puppy is in her setup and you can see that brown thing on the ground, that is a carpet. So even if she has an accident, it's gonna happen on the carpet. It's not gonna seep into the carpet. I'm not saying this is the solution for everyone, but for me and my very restricted carpeted space, that really works really well. So my pen and her crate are set on top of the car. Maybe you have tile or hardwood. Your life cleaning up after your puppy will be a lot easier. Let's say you have a huge house. What I would recommend is setting up a space for your puppy, such as putting some gates in the hallways or setting up a pen. Even though cleaning up accidents is easier for you, if you have a big space and you give your puppy too much freedom too fast, you might not catch the moment your puppy runs around the corner and has an accident. And as it is with a lot of these training tips, all of these measures are temporary. So yes, it's a pain that that thing is in my living room slash kitchen, but the more I can get cons uh, consistency with house training now, the sooner I can just ignore my puppy and predictably know she won't pee or poop in my house sooner. And to be honest, her, she's not in the pen for house training. Her house training is going really great. Um, she's in the pen so that she doesn't, you know, go chew on the wires while I do this live stream right now. Oh, still can't hear me. Hmm. Just one moment. Okay, well, there is a little bit of a delay between the real live stream and what I'm seeing on Facebook. And I know I was muted in the beginning, but I see some can't hear you comments. So hopefully that's addressed by now. All right, so set up your space, prepare for accidents. Do that by um, putting down something to protect your carpet or restricting your puppy's space so that they can't just run off on you and have an accident while you're not looking. And all of these measures are... Um, Ah, when I turned the thing. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I was just showing you the tarp, 
Um, and just an example of how I use that measure to protect my carpet. Um, and then if you don't have carpet, you can still use other measures like blocking off your puppy, especially when you're not supervising so that they can't run off and have accidents. All right, all of the technical things. I actually didn't use the speaker today because I thought I'm sitting right here and it won't be a problem, but next time, speaker. Thank you guys so much for your feedback. It's very helpful. We always wanna make these videos better. So tip number two is have your puppy potty supplies ready. If you're a puppy owner, I'm sure you will empathize when I say there are those moments, right? Where you're thinking, okay, I gotta get her out. Um, where are my shoes? Do I have treats ready? Um, where's the leash, right? And then all the while you're watching your puppy hoping they don't squat right then and there. So I'm just gonna share a very simple photo because I think visuals are always really, really great. Um, let me just pull it up real quick. And here it is. Okay, so this is just a really um, simple photo of kind of, if you go down this hallway and turn left, there's the laundry room uh, and that door leads to my backyard. So notice in the corner on the dryer there, there's a little bag of dry treats. I picked dry treats on purpose because I don't need to worry about them getting moldy or um, getting soggy. They're just really easy treats. Uh, that I use as potty treats. I have some poop bags ready. There's a headlamp, you know, winter, it gets, it was, it's, we're getting daylight, but it gets dark really early. So headlamp, um, warm jackets hanging right there. Uh, Flip-flops, just you know, you're rushing a puppy out, no time to lace up your shoes, right? So this just exists. That way, um, when I'm in a rush to get the puppy out, I, everything is right there. I don't need to scramble. And it could be as something as simple as getting a bowl right now or a mason jar, just pouring some treats and putting it um, wherever your most convenient door is. Or if you have a specific jacket you put on, just stuff some poop bags in that jacket. Whatever your routine looks like, think about where there might be hiccups or things that you miss and just get those tools ready right now. That's gonna really help things move smoothly. Okay, I'm gonna end this screen share here. Tip number three is to have your puppy on leash when you give them a potty break. And um, the reason for this is I'm sure a lot of you puppy owners have had the experience of you bringing them out diligently for a break. And instead of going potty, they are doing everything else. They're chewing on sticks, they're playing in the snow, maybe they're biting at your pant legs. And that is completely normal puppy behavior because they have such short attention spans. But a lot of those challenges can be mitigated if you have them on leash when you bring them out. And the reason for that is you can prevent them from wandering off and getting distracted. Uh, that's a pretty simple tip for you. And again, this isn't a permanent thing. You're just establishing the routine. And once that potty training routine is consistent, all of these rules can become lax and you're gonna have a really easy time house training your puppy. Um, along with the tip number three of leashing your puppy to so they don't get distracted when you go out, it's also important to be boring when you stand out there. So if you are also rewarding sits or like doing training or you're talking to your puppy while they're you're also trying to get them to go potty they might also get distracted and think oh play time with you and they are not going to focus on sniffing around and trying to find a good spot to eliminate so just stand there hold the leash be as boring as possible and um so leash your puppy and be boring that's tip number three but that, that leads directly into tip number four which is reward your puppy every single time after they go. And reward means give your puppy a treat after they go, whether it's number one or number two, but you can also play with your puppy. If you have a securely fenced yard and you take them out on leash, after they go, take the leash off and go ahead and romp around the yard with them. Let them play in the snow, play with toys, bring them inside if it's too cold and start playing a little bit. What this is going to do is it's going to teach your puppy to eliminate as soon as possible. Because if elimination leads to reward, then they can't wait to get it done. And that lead lends itself to really easy house training. Um, I'm on my third puppy by now. And all three of my dogs, including my old one who lived for 12 and a half years and Bray who's chilling right here. Um, I've never, every time I open the door and I just give them the cue to go potty, they just go easy, just so fast, 
I never need to wait around for minutes for them to go. And it's because when they were young puppies, I did this easy thing of making sure the fun time happens right after they go. If you live in an apartment type situation um, or a situation where you need to walk your puppy a little bit for them to go, then this tip adapts into do not end the walk the moment they go because then they're gonna learn to just hold it to extend their outdoor time as long as possible. And instead bring a toy with you on your little, you know, potty walk around the yard or neighborhood um, or bring treats and make the party happen. Um, or even just walk one extra block if you need to walk just to, so they know the fun continues after they eliminate. All right, I'm not seeing any questions come in or any technical difficulty comments. I'm assuming things are going smoothly technically. And again, feel free to leave any questions in the comments section as we go. All right, tip number five, and this pertains to how do you know how long a puppy can hold it? And the answer is, unfortunately, that all puppies are different in this regard. So I wish I could give you a formula. The general formula, actually, there is a formula. The general formula is that puppies can hold it um, whatever their uh, age in months is plus one. So as an example, if you have an eight week old puppy, let's say that's roughly two months old, they can hold it for two to three hours. And that's during the daytime. The, a puppy's metabolism really slows down when they're sleeping. And this is why you might hear stories from friends or other puppy owners of even eight to 12 week old puppies sleeping through the night for eight hours, but also going every hour or two when they're awake. So that um, age and months plus one equals number of hours formula is a very loose formula because all puppies are different, but it only applies to waking hours. I personally have never, of my three, never raised a puppy that can hold it from the get-go eight hours overnight, um, nor would I push them that far just to see, but do know that the nighttime gets easier faster than the daytime. Okay, just checking my list here. Tip number six, never punish your puppy if they have an accident inside. It's very tempting, of course, because it's frustrating. I know it from personal experience because, I mean, I wish I could say because I'm a professional trainer, my puppy's never had an accident, but that's just simply not true. So, but never punish them. Um, very old school training and advice that's still kind of there on the internet will tell you things like catch them in the act, um, give them a little spank, rub their nose in it, don't ever do that or even just scold them because scolding is harmless, but you're letting them know that what they did is wrong. And I'm actually not going to say that all of that, especially scolding is going to, um, is, I understand why it works because when you see a behavior you don't like, and if you punish it, the behavior will decrease over time, right? That's just behavior science. But here's the thing. Um, it doesn't quite work that way for house training because puppies are so young and new to the world and there are so many unintended consequences to punishing a puppy, whether it's physically or even just verbally when they have an accident inside. One is house training, the concept of house training is very, um, it's very variable in some way. So here's an example. When you teach a dog to sit, there's only one right answer. Their butt just goes on the ground right there and then, right? And everything else is not a sit. Everything else is wrong. And I'm not going to tell you to punish your dog for not sitting. Um, but there, that's just an example of how there are some behaviors that we teach dogs and puppies that are cut and dry, black and white. House training is not so. To us, it's obvious. To us, house training is teaching a dog to not eliminate inside. But think about all the correct choices they can make outside. Like think about even a 10 square foot yard the puppy can go here or here or here or here in the yard. It doesn't matter as long as they're going out of the yard. So there are many correct answers. In the same way, there are many incorrect answers. So let's say you scold your puppy for peeing um, on the carpet right by the front door. They didn't learn not to pee inside. They just learned maybe, maybe they learned don't pee on the carpet right by the front door. But, you know, I, they like that the carpet is absorbent they might pee on the carpet by the coffee table because that's a different um, situation compared to peeing uh, by the front door. And then if you punish them for peeing by the carpet at the car on the carpet by the front at the front door and at the coffee table, 
it doesn't teach them to not pee on the tiles in the mud room, right? So you can see where this can get complicated. And here's the, really the one of the biggest reasons why you should never punish a puppy for having an accident. And what you could accidentally teach is for your puppy to be just a little scared of the consequences of peeing when you're around or pooping when you're around. I can't tell you how many, one of the biggest house training challenges we get through our free helpline calls is people who feel stuck with their dogs in house training because they don't actually ever see their dogs go. The accidents still happen, but their puppies and their dogs are going when they're not looking. It doesn't matter if they put on the guilty look when you do find it and scold them for that. The, the reality is the problem persisted. So really what the dog was taught accidentally is just to not eliminate in front of people. And you can imagine how hard house training gets from there. So um, if you're watching this and you have a puppy, you have a great head start on this. Accidents are normal. Just clean it up. And I will actually give you even more tips on how to reduce accidents over time, but do not punish for accidents. Okay, tip number seven is knowing when to add time. And the general rule is if it feels easy, add 30 more minutes. So let's say you've had your puppy in your house for a week or two and you're letting them out every couple hours. And when you let them out every couple hours, um, it doesn't seem like they need to go urgently. They kind of just toddle around and they, they eliminate and it's really casual or maybe they don't even eliminate. Whatever your time increments are, add 30 minutes more to that. And then when that time frame becomes easy, you can add more to that as well. One thing to keep in mind with time is when a puppy is active, like very active, they're going to need to go sooner. So as an example, you might have a puppy who can hold it five to seven hours overnight and three hours during the day, but maybe you've seen them suddenly stop and pee while playing with a toy, even though you just let them out 30 minutes ago. That's a very common situation to have happen. And it's because while they're playing with a toy or playing with a dog or playing fetch or training with you, they're just so amped up and their metabolism is uh, sped up. So they're just gonna have to go sooner. So even though your puppy might've just gone, if they have just done something active such as play, let them out again. And that's gonna save you a lot of frustration and prevention of them just suddenly squatting in the middle of a session. If they're having a long session, like they're playing with their friend's dog for an hour in your house, interrupt the session halfway through and give them a quick potty break. We do this in our puppy kindergarten class. Even though it's only 45 minutes, we always include a potty break in the middle of it and almost all of the puppies go, even if they had just gone before class. Okay. We're just trucking through here. And again, I am watching the comments to see if there are any questions along the way. Um, tip number eight is to uh, keep a log. And I mean, I'm a little bit of a freak about this because I love keeping data. So here is a potty log and it's only from um, January 30th to today. And I'm, I don't think you can see it very well because of my lighting, but really all it is is the time of day and whether she peed or pooped easy as that. I have a really awesome partner at home and we have different work schedules. So um, way back in the beginning when I first got Paya, there were some accidents because it would be something like, um, or what would happen is I wouldn't check, I wouldn't communicate about, oh, when did you let her out? Or I was lax about it, or I didn't set a timer. And then whoop, there she goes, she had an accident. Um, and what's funny is if I look on my logs, it will say like, was thinking about letting her out. And when I looked at her, she's peed. So it's not like I don't know what I'm doing. It's just, I wasn't being as diligent as I should. I don't need to be that diligent now because of house training and age, but keeping a log will really, really, really help. Especially if you have more than one person in your household who is helping raise your puppy. Think about all the times you don't need to text them and um, all of that and be confused. Just have someone write it down. If you have a lot of family members who are contributing, you can even put this by the puppy's crate or by the door that they go out to potty to make it even easier for the information to be consolidated. Here's the other really, really critical thing about keeping a log. Um, it allows you to identify how to address accidents. So I told you I was gonna help you guys reduce the number of accidents and keeping the log, a log is the way. Here's what happens when you don't keep a log. 
Um, you might go a few days without an accident and then every few days your puppy has an accident here or there. Honestly, I mean, you probably won't be able to remember clearly because on bad days, you might think, oh, house training isn't going anywhere. But if you get two days of success, you might think house training is going great. So it allows you to really clearly see where the problems are. And also when you don't keep a log and your puppy has accidents here and there, um, people often just get really, really anxious and hypervigilant about house training. So they'll call us and say something like, we're doing everything. We're letting the puppy out every 30 minutes and there are still accidents. And I feel sorry for those people because they don't need to let their puppy out every 30 minutes. They only need to let their puppy out every 30 minutes when during the time frame that they're having accidents. So here's an example. Um, a few months ago when she was much younger, there were three days in a row where she peed in her pen area. And of course, even though I'm a professional trainer, I had a little internal crisis like, oh no, I'm the worst trainer and house training just sucks and it's not going well, right? Because we all do this or maybe it's just me. But if I looked at my log, I could see, oh wait, no, she had a great week or two, no accidents. What happened? right? So I looked on three days, the log for the three days that she had accidents, and the accidents were only happening between five and nine o'clock in the evening. What happens five to nine o'clock in the evening? I come home from work, and I play with her, and I train with her, so just things are much more exciting. Like right now, she's just playing, and it's 620. Um, so what I identified is we don't need to let her out more throughout the day, everything else was fine. We don't, we don't need to care eight o'clock in the morning to five o'clock at night. All we needed to do was add one more potty break in between five o'clock and nine o'clock along with the regular schedule we were keeping. So adding one more break in and ever since then she's actually never had an accident. So again, keeping a log allows you to pinpoint where the problems are. So you don't need to guess and you don't need to redo your whole potty plan or be really nervous about you need watching your puppy like a hawk, you just need to address the exact times that the potty um, accidents are happening. All right, so keeping a log. And I also wrote set a timer because um, a log doesn't help if you are gonna disregard the information on the log, which I did by accident a few times. So setting a timer is helpful too. Okay, um, also, oh, I just love logs so much. Keeping the log will also let you know literally how long your puppy can hold it and it allows you to increase time very very uh, methodically and then you can, can maintain that success even as you're stretching that time um okay tip number nine is a bit of a special tip uh, it's know when to check with your vet so this is definitely if only if you have an outstanding circumstance. But if potty training is feeling extreme, like abnormally hard, it is always a good idea to rule out any medical causes for this. And um, here are, I'm not a vet, but here are just some common signs of a urinary tract infection or a, a dog or a puppy having crystals in their urine or something going on there. Um, if your puppy is squatting and peeing very, very frequently, like um, multiple times in an hour or multiple times over a short amount of time. Um, if the urine spots are really small, so not full bladder emptying, but just small little spots. If there's discoloration in the urine or an abnormally foul smell, those are all signs that you should have your puppy checked out. Um, the when, when Paya had an accident, when that way back when I thought, hmm, that's weird not because of any of the symptoms I described, but because it was outside of the normal range of when she would, had an accident. I just got a urinalysis done anyways. It cost me like 20 bucks, 20 to 30 bucks. Um, it came back normal. So I just ruled out that it was a medical cause and she just had a random accident that never happened again in that time slot. But here's the thing, if there is a medical cause for it, it doesn't matter if you follow all of these tips, You're puppy will still have accidents because there's a medical reason behind it. So it never hurts to rule out um, medical reasons for it. And the good news is the sooner you catch it, the easier the treatment is. And treatment is relatively simple and cheap. Usually it's just a course of antibiotics, but again, not a vet and every case is different. Um, I will quickly share that with Bray, who was even easier to house train than Paya, as in he had a total um, his total number of accidents was less than Pius. Pius had about eight accidents and Bray had much less than that. 
Um, but he had maybe two or three accidents in his crate really early on. But and um, my 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 um, coworkers I work who have been working with dogs for uh, over ten years said to me, Tiff, it's not a UTI because look at all of the other ways he's succeeding. Other than those accidents in the crates, he hasn't had a single accident. I went and got uh, your analysis done anyways, and guess what? He had a full-blown UTI. So it just goes to show that sometimes the symptoms aren't obvious. He wasn't peeing in small spot, um, small amounts. He didn't have discoloration or odor in his urine. He had a UTI and I treated it. Um, so I am just such a huge fan of ruling that out and being proactive. Okay. Um, number 10 is more of just a word of encouragement. Mistakes are normal, right? I'm a professional trainer. I've been doing this for a long time and I'm having a relatively easy time raising my puppy. But like I said, she's had maybe eight accidents or so. And um, there was that time I just mentioned where she had an accident that was abnormal from the schedule that I'm keeping and I'm doing all of this stuff, right? But she's a puppy. She still has accidents, even though she's five months old and growing and hasn't had an accident in a long time, regression might happen during adolescence. So if she has an accident today, doesn't mean I failed as a person or as a trainer, just means that dogs are dogs. And like us, they have days where they are just a little different than the day before. So don't beat yourself up. Don't beat your dog up. If there is a mistake, just clean it up and log it and <laughs> we'll try again the next day or just in a few hours. Do know when to um, seek help though. So a mistake is not the end of the world. A string of consistent mistakes means that there's something that needs to change as far as our behavior and our routine for house training. All right, so those were 10 tips. There was a, an 11th one, I forgot it. If it comes to mind, I'll share it with you. Um, so I'm looking at the comments here and there's a great question. There's a roommate situation. It's a party at that house, four dogs, two cats. The puppy is learning house training, but she goes um, into the roommate's designated space and pees. And it happens immediately after being outside. So that's really strange. <laughs> but I mean, what, I, if you called our free behavior helpline, we would have a full conversation with you for free and ask you a lot, ask you a lot about other aspects of your household. But in a nutshell, here's the easiest thing you can do. I would uh, close the door to your roommate's room and advise them to be just stringent about keeping that door closed for now. Maybe put up a baby gate or something uh, because there is everything that I said. So it could have just been an accident. It could be, um, here's the thing. Sometimes puppies need to go consecutively to empty their bladder. So Paya empties her bladder in one go and then she could hold it for however long. Bray, even as a young puppy, needed to pee twice in a row before I knew his bladder was empty. So there's that possibly. Um, there's also habit forming. So I spoke with, um, I know someone whose puppy was very easy to house train, except the one time he pooped under the coffee table and he would go perfectly outside, except he would sometimes poop under the coffee table because something about the space maybe it was dark and you know protective he just liked going under the coffee table but what solved that issue is just they blocked off the coffee table for a few weeks the puppy continued to go outside perfectly like he did before and then after a few weeks of not practicing that habit and they removed the the barrier he no longer pooped under the coffee table so those are just some off the top of my head thoughts but not knowing the full situation um, if those tips don't help, just give our free behavior helpline a call and we will continue helping you out. All right, I'm just going to pause for a quick second here just to see if any other comments come out or come through with questions. And in that moment, I'm just going to think really hard about what that last tip was. Hmm. Nope, it's not coming to me. <laughs> Well, 10 tips are a lot too. And I truly hope that this makes your house training journey with your puppy easier. Um, it should be tedious. Like no one likes to wake up in the middle of the night, especially in the winter and with the cold weather coming. Um, no one likes to set a watch and need to like interrupt their routine to go out every few hours, but it should be tedious. It should not be hard. So if it's hard, please give us a call because we will make it easy for you. Um, quick note, 
our puppy class has always been on Wednesday at six o'clock and we have a beha uh, behavior spotlight on Thursdays. And uh, we're just gonna switch that real quick. So we're gonna do puppy class Thursdays at six o'clock starting next week and behavior spotlight on Wednesday at six o'clock. But tomorrow is Thursday and I'm gonna do the behavior spotlight. Um, we are, go I'm gonna be presenting on nose work and scent games. And this is gonna be accessible for adult dogs and puppies. Whether you're doing nose work competitively or you just want some fun, easy, mentally enriching games that makes use of your dog's amazing ability to smell, we're gonna address all of that tomorrow. Um, I see a really great question come in with cleaning a soiled carpet. Is there a best way to do it? Yes, there is a best way to do it. First, you sop up as much as possible with an absorbent cloth or a towel or something. A lot of people spray the cleaning solution right on it and that's not, it just makes it more saturated. So soak up as much as possible and then go in with your cleaning solution. Um, they use an enzymatic cleaner. So don't use bleach or your common household or carpet cleaning products. Go for one specifically made for pet messes. Um, let it sit, let the solution sit for whatever the bottle recommends and then sop it up and you know, really vigorously try to get it out with a clean absorbent towel or other material. Um, honestly, as a trainer, I don't think that enzymatic cleaners are the make or break part of house training because I think house training is more about setting the routine and teaching a dog to go outside. But I do see the, the logic to a puppy smelling where they went and then thinking, well, maybe this is a potty area. So it's one of those can't hurt to try, but I didn't include it on my tips because I already had so many. And I like, here's an example. I've lived in so many rentals where there were clear urine stains everywhere from the previous dog. My dogs have never soiled because the carpet was messy. So, um, but yes, enzymatic cleaner and follow the instructions. Great question. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up our information card so that if you have any further questions about house training or really anything training or behavior related, you can contact us and we will be happy to help. Okay, here it is. Our email is behavior at myhswm.org. And you see the, the, the schedule there. So we're switching the time, the dates for behavior spotlight and puppy class, but the time is the same. Um, if you are feeling generous, all of these services and many more are free through our shelter, but any donation that you feel like you want to make goes towards the care of our shelter pets. And we also are posting these live streams on our YouTube channel, slowly but surely. Before that they are up though, if you or your friends want access to this material, please um, just check the Facebook page. They are just still on our Facebook page for you to view for all time. So thank you so much for being here tonight. And um, even though this live stream was not very interactive with your puppy, I hope you walked away with a lot of awesome tips. If you have a young puppy, go give them a potty break right now, even though it's only been 30 minutes. And tomorrow's live stream will be much more um, interactive. So I hope to see you there. All right. Have a great evening.